Hi class, welcome back to Calculus 3. I'm Dr. Scott Adamson, and in this video and the next, we're gonna to put together some ideas that you've been studying. You've been studying directional derivatives, partial derivatives, gradient vectors, all in this three-dimensional world, and we just know that sometimes those ideas start to get muddled. So the purpose of this and the next video is to just clarify and make sure that you're clear on what is a partial derivative, a directional derivative, and a gradient vector independently, but also how do they work together to help us solve problems. Now, the problem that we're going to look at today is based on a made up but relatively realistic context. And the context is this. Now you have to go to the link below the video to download the document with the notes so you can see this image that I'm going to describe right now. The image is this. You see a Google Earth image of a lake in northern Minnesota called Trout Lake. And on that lake, there's a boat located about a quarter mile offshore with a coordinate system superimposed on top of that lake. The boat is located at a specific point on the lake. Now what we're going to examine is, if the boat were to travel in a given direction, would the water get deeper or more shallow as the boat travels in that direction? So there's a function that describes or that models the depth of the water in the lake in that region, and we're going to find out as the boat travels, is the water getting deeper or shallower? Now, first, before we even start with the computations, we're gonna to try to get a visual image of what's happening here using GeoGebra. To make sense of whether or not the water's getting deeper or more shallow as the boat travels in the given direction of 2i plus 2j, we're gonna use GeoGebra. So first of all, this is the surface representing the depth of the water. So for any input x here in red, uh, y here in green, we're going to produce an output here in blue that represents the depth of the water. And so you can see we're at the, the boat's at this point A, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and the depth of the water is just, uh, I don't know, maybe five point something. All right, now the boat's going to travel in the direction of 2i plus 2j, and the question is, does the depth of the water get greater or lesser as we travel in that direction. Now it's good to get an orientation here. So let me put this in an orientation that you're probably more familiar with. And that is, let's look at the xy plane. So here's your positive x-axis, here's your positive y-axis as you're used to seeing. The boat is traveling in the direction of 2i plus 2j. So if the boat travels in that direction, is the depth of the water getting more or less? Now, you, this is what's beautiful about this. You have to kind of see it in different views to try to get a sense. Like in that view, it looks like my output is increasing as the boat travels in that direction. Oops, just end up moving that. <laughs> Let's try to spin around and see if we can see that. Yeah, it looks like if even a slight increase Try to get a flat view of it. Yeah, there you go. So in this view, the XY plane is sort of, uh, we're, at, we're at ground level, and we see that as the boat travels in that direction, it looks like it's increasing. It looks like the depth is increasing. It looks like the Z values, the output values are increasing, even if just slightly, as the boat travels in that direction. So let's go back to the board and compute and see, is it the case that if the boat travels in the direction of 2i plus 2j, that the depth of the water is indeed increasing. Let's go find out. So we saw from the graph that as the boat travels in that direction of the vector 2i plus 2j, it appears as the depth function is increasing, even if just by a little bit, it seems that the water is getting deeper as the boat travels in that direction. We're now gonna go through the computations of this directional derivative to see if what we're seeing on that graph is true or not. Let's start computing. Now, here's the first thing. 
we have this height function. The height at a location on the surface of the water is given by this function. The boat is currently at this location, quarter of a mile in the x direction, quarter of a mile in the y direction, and then at that location, the boat's gonna start traveling in the direction of 2i plus 2j. Now to just, again, get some visualization, I like to just sketch a little image in the xy plane of what it is we've got going on here. So if I could just do a quick little thinking sketch here, the point, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, so we're a quarter of a mile in the x direction, a quarter of a mile in the y direction, the boat is located right about there. The boat's gonna travel in the direction of 2i plus 2j. So can you imagine from that location, and, uh, a horizontal component of two units, a vertical component of two units, that means the boat is, is traveling in that direction. So if the boat's traveling in that direction, is the water getting deeper or shallower? Now, what we need to do first in computing this thing called a directional derivative is this vector needs to be unitized. Right now, this vector has a magnitude of the square root of two squared plus two squared. That would be the square root of eight. The vector has a length of the square root of eight. We don't want to measure this rate of change based on traveling a distance of the square root of eight units. We want it to be per one unit. Now think about it. whenever we report a rate of change, like if you're driving your car and you say, I'm driving 60 miles per one hour, we always report a rate. It's conventional to report a rate as a per unit of one unit of time, or in this case, one unit of distance. So rather than say the, the water got deeper at so many feet per square root of eight miles traveled, we want to scale that back to just be a unit of one. So we're going to take our vector, we're going to call it a unit vector u. We're going to take our, our vector 2i plus 2j and divide by its magnitude of square root of eight in order to have a unit vector. So imagine originally the vector had a magnitude of square root of eight. We're just scaling that back down to have a magnitude of one. This is not to scale, just helping me think through this. So now the boat is here at 0 0.25, 0 0.25, gonna travel in that direction, but instead of square root of eight units, in this case, miles of distance, one. So we're gonna have a rate per one mile traveled. All right, second thing, the directional derivative, here's the notation for it, we will say, how is this depth function changing in the direction of that unit vector? That's the notation we use, is the subscript u vector at the point that we're interested in. In our case, it's gonna be the point 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and to compute that directional derivative, we need a gradient vector, the gradient of h, dotted with that unit vector. So in order to accomplish this directional derivative, we need two pieces. We need the gradient vector and the unit vector. The unit vector we've got, we need the gradient vector. So let's take a moment and compute the gradient vector. The gradient vector, as you know from previous videos is a vector consisting of the partial derivative with respect to x at the point we're interested in i plus the partial derivative with respect to y at the point we're interested in j that is the components of the gradient vector are the partial derivatives so in order to get this gradient vector we need some partial derivatives. So let's work on that. So partial derivative with respect to x at the point x, y. Now my function, my depth function, h of x, y, 6x squared plus 5 cosine of y, we need the partial derivative with respect to x. Well, this term does not have the variable x, so we're thinking of it as a constant. We're going to hold this constant. Only this term has the variable x, 
So we're going to take the derivative of 6x squared and get 12x plus the derivative of this holding y constant makes this whole term constant, and the derivative of a constant is zero. And so the partial derivative with respect to x at any point x comma y is just 12x. The partial derivative with respect to y at any point x comma y. Now, when we take the partial derivative with respect to y, we're allowing y to vary, but x is being held constant. So this term, 6x squared, is held constant. We just need the derivative of 5 cosine of y. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine of y, so we'll get negative 5 sine of y. Now remember, 6x squared, we're holding constant, so the derivative would be 0. So here's the two partial derivatives. So now we can go back and compute our gradient vector. The partial derivative with respect to x at any point x, y was 12x. So the gradient vector is going to be 12xi plus the partial derivative with respect to y at any point x, y was negative 5 sine y. So let's say minus 5 sine of y, j. Now, this is the gradient vector at any point x and y. Let's actually compute this gradient vector at the point we are interested in, which is the point 0 0.25, 0 0.25. So when x is 0.25 and y is 0.25, we'll have 12 times 0.25 i. We'll have minus 5 times the sine of 0.25 j. Now if you need a calculator, that's all good, but let's compute this and see. So 12 times a quarter, 0.25 is a quarter, 12 times a quarter is 3, so this will be 3i, and then 5 times the sine of 0 0.25, I've got it right here, is about 1.237 approximately. So let's say 1.237j. So let's say that the gradient vector is approximately, since I did a little approximation there, 3i minus 1.237j. All right, so back to our, part, our uh, directional derivative. We needed a gradient vector, got it. We needed a unit vector, got it. We just need to dot them. All right, so we're going to compute this dot product. The directional derivative is the dot product between these two vectors. Now keep in mind, the dot product of two vectors produces a scalar, which is wonderful because that's what we want. A directional derivative is a rate of change. In this case, how is the depth of the water changing if the boat travels in that direction 2i plus 2j? So we do want to get just a rate of change, a scalar. The dot product produces that scalar. So let's go ahead and, and compute it. So the gradient vector was 3i minus 1.237j. We're going to dot that with the unit vector 2 over the square root of 8i plus 2 over the square root of 8j. All right, so here we go. This dot product is computed as shown. All right, let's go. Dot product, we take the product of the i component, so three times two times a uh, two over the square root of eight will be six over the square root of eight. This product is gonna be minus 1.237, let me just write it out here, 1.237 times two over the square root of eight. And again, notice the dot product is a scalar. So this is where we just need a computer a calculator and crunch some numbers here. When you multiply all these together and subtract, we get 1.247. All right, now what does this all mean? Remember back in GeoGebra, as we were examining the graph and imagining the boat traveling in that direction, it appeared as though the function increased. Even if slightly, we saw the function increase. The, the output got a little bit bigger as the boat traveled in that direction. Well, now we have 
convincing argument that that's true. That rate of change is 1.247. But 1.247, what? All right, keep in mind the context here. The depth of the water was measured in feet. So what we would say is the depth of the water got 1.247 feet deeper per, now what is it per? Remember we traveled in the direction of that vector 2i plus 2j, but we scaled it back to have a unit, uh, a unit vector, have a magnitude of one. So it's 1.247 feet deeper per one mile traveled. So we could say 1.247 feet deep per mile traveled, but keep in mind in the direction of that 2i plus 2j vector. And I, this is where directional derivatives get a little bit awkward in terms of interpretation. It's not just a simple like driving your car 60 miles per hour and you're done. <laughs> in this case, you have to say all the details. First of all, 1.247 feet worth of depth of the water per one mile traveled in the direction of 2i plus 2j. If we traveled, if this boat traveled in any other direction, we wouldn't probably get that same rate of change. In fact, in the next video, we're gonna see what happens if we travel in a different direction. In fact, what happens, or how could we figure out what direction to travel to obtain the greatest rate of change? So, as we recap all of this, you have to just get your mind around all the pieces. What are the pieces? Gradient vectors. Gradient vector is consisting of partial derivatives. Unit vector in the direction. Dot product. Put all of that together as you saw in this video to get the full interpretation. Units, feet deep per one mile traveled in the direction of the given vector. All of that together is necessary to fully understand, to fully make sense of the directional derivative. Now, go watch the next video to see more about what is this gradient vector.